and Voldemort's horrible, lipless mouth twists with malice. <clears throat> Excuse me. Because if you are so adverse to the murder of our girl's parents, we could make things ten times simpler for everyone and just dispose of her. Or would that not sit comfortably with you? Forgive me, but you misunderstand me, Lucia says smoothly. I merely believe that she might be, that it might be practical to allow the girl to live. <clears throat> I mean, that rasp out there, I can't say. <laughs> Voldemort looks at Lucia's as if he's studying him, trying to work something out. Well, then. He says eventually, eventually, <laughs> eventually. Let us not waste time. Go. You will need to leave the body so the murder can be made as public as possible. But Potter must know what happened. And when you have finished the job, you will need to tell the girl what you have done. A muscle goes in Lucius's jaw. Does she have to know about it? Voldemort looks at him incredulously. Of course she has to know. The whole point is that Potter needs to be aware that he causes her suffering beyond endurance. If she is not aware of what has happened, then what will Potter have to feel guilty about? You must kill her parents. And then you must tell her of their deaths. Lucius looks as if he's about to say something for a moment. But he seems to think better of it. He bows low and turns to leave the room. And Voldemort laughs. There's no need to look at me like that, Lucius. He calls after him. After all, surely it is fortunate the task falls to you. Rather than a man with a conscience. Lucius pauses, his hand resting on the door handle, before he pushes the door open and leaves the room. The scene melts away from him, but I don't even res I don't even register it. I'm too lost in my own thoughts. So now I know the truth. He didn't kill my parents because he was ordered to. He killed my parents because he killed my parents to save me. <laughs> no. It's all wrong. He doesn't doesn't change the fact that he murdered my parents in cold blood as they slept in their beds. His motives for doing it don't matter. Do they? Screams bring me back to where I am. Screams of pain and agony that I know all too well. The screams are brought on by the Cruciatus curse. But it's not me that's screaming this time. <clears throat> I am so sorry. I am overreacting. I need to break it down because I can't. I'm not going to be able to do this if I'm too excited, too ridiculous. <sighs> okay. I'm getting into this, by the way. I'm like reading this like for an hour or something. Hard. Core enveloped in the story. Okay. It's not me that's screaming. It's not me that's screaming this time. We're still in the room in the black ironwork, but the things have changed. Voldemort is furious. His foul face and grotesque twisted with rage as he points his wand at the dark, writhing mass on the floor. Sorry, Lucius! Voldemort screams, sending another jet of green light towards him, towards the black bundle. Sorry! You come to me with your pathetic excuses. How dare you offer me your striped apologies when you let Potter escape so that you could savage away this mudblood? Sorry, sorry, sorry is it good enough? Another scream, another stream of green light flies out of the end of Voldemort's wand and hits Lucius, who screams and bucks and rises as the curse racks through his body. Oh, for me. All because he went after me rather than Harry. The curse leaves him 
and he lies sprawled on the ground. His usual elegance completely abandoned him as he breathes harshly. He lifts his head and stares up at Voldemort. A small stream of blood escapes his lips. His eyes are webbed with pain. Voldemort stares down at him, his rage almost palpable, even though it's only a memory. Even though they're only in a memory. I hope she was worth it. Lucy. Is all he says. And the invisible hook pulls at my back, and I'm being dragged up and up through the mist, and everything's a blur as I fall backwards, fly back, up and up. I slam back into my seat, breathless and disoriented. I lean forward and rest my hands on the table in front of me, trying to get my breath back. I lift my head up slowly to look across the table. Voldemort is watching me, his eyes narrow slits. I believe you'll understand when I tell you that what you just saw has been worry, has been a worry of mine for some time now. His eyes is cold. His voice is cold and very still. He's angry, I think. I don't. I don't really know him. But I can breathe a little easier. At least he doesn't think. He doesn't think I know anything about Zolohoff's parents. No. He wants to know what's been going on between Lucius and me. He suspects something, just like Bellatrix does, just like Dolohoff did. But nothing is going on. Not really. So I don't have to worry. Right? Voldemort rests his hand on the table in front of him. I lean backward slightly, his red eyes bore onto me, before I can feel the invisible hand of legitimacy. Legitimacy? Legitimacy? I can't say that word. Roaming through my mind, thank God. At first, I thought nothing of it. Voldemort whispers. It often occurred. Occurs that a bond can be created between a prisoner and a captive. It has happened among, amongst my death eaters before. And it will happen again. His eyes darken. But when he went against my specific instructions, when he went for you, rather than Potter, the Weasley's home, that was when I knew things had gotten too far. When a loyal Death Eater ignores my orders in order to keep a mudblood prisoner closer to him, then I know something is very wrong indeed. He pauses, waiting for me to react. I school my face into an expression of puzzlement. Bellatrix and Antonin have both voiced their opinions to me about the pair of you, he goes on. At first I put their suspicions down to jealousy. Antonin wanted to get his hands on you from the moment you were captured. And Bellatrix, well, let's just say she has her own reasons to resent whatever relationship pair of you have, been, have had have with each other. That gives me pause. I don't even know if Voldemort knew about Bellatrix and Lucius. Tell me. <laughs> tell me. I swear to God, drink every time they say tell me. Straight up happens all the time. It's the thing they do. Okay. <laughs> He leans further forward in his chair. What is there between the pair of you? I gulp, and I force myself to keep my keep on breathing. I don't know what you're talking about. I say. 
infuriated with the slight squeak in my voice. He smiled. Doesn't need to be spelled out for you, girl. Lucius told me you were intelligent. He sits back in his chair, staring at me. Tell me how the pair of you interact with each other. I take a deep breath, my heart racing, banging against my chest. Keep calm. Keep steady. Well, at first he tortured me. I say, trying to keep my voice monotonous. You know that. I needed to get information out of me. And he chose, and he chose to torture me to get it. And um, ever since we moved here, um, he's pretty much just left me alone. Uh, he only ever sees me when he brings me downstairs to clean the house, or when he brings me my food. That's all. His eyes are slit of suspicion. Nothing else. He says eventually. You do not interact in any other way. I know what he's asking. And so I answer. And so the answer I give isn't really a lie. Not really. No, we don't, I say steadily. He barely even speaks to me. His face relaxed slightly, <laughs> except for to be like, would it be so bad to touch you? You know why, Mudblood? What else has he said so far? Um, you, just let me take you home. Like, you'll never escape me. You're mine forever. I own you, things along those lines. He's never, he hasn't said anything intense yet. I mean, those are intense, but the intense shit is coming. <laughs> like, it is coming. I don't know if you can hear my snaps, but I snapped every single stop. Well, I think Lucius says more romantic things than she does. I'm gonna put that out there. I mean, it's not like he's like, I love you to death and everything you say is beautiful. But I mean, like, she's like, I fucking hate you. And he's like, I'm not gonna spoil it. <laughs> I'm not gonna see yet to read. It's gonna be exciting, though. I'm pretty adorable. I just read 44. I didn't know. Okay. 44 is Eden. It's called Eden. It's beautifully written by beautifully written I mean beautiful it's pretty beautifully written but it's crazy it's crazy it's crazy what is said in that episode you're gonna be excited and it's gonna be awesome okay um getting off topic again <laughs> his face relaxes slightly and he brings his hand and he brings his hand up to his chin and studies me thoughtfully I must assume you are telling the truth. He murmurs before he leans forward again. But tell me, Hermione, don't you fear him? I nod. I can answer that question truthfully. Yes, of, of course. After everything he did to me when I was first captured? <laughs> no, you, you misunderstand me. What I mean is, do you fear him as a man? I pause for a second. How can I answer that question when I don't really know the answer myself? No, I say clearly. I realized quickly that when I was first captured, that my mudblood status keeps me safe in that respect, especially in Lucius's case. The only thing he feels for me is hate. I'm certain of it. He looks at me for a few seconds before he smiles. Evidently, he's